you later. Steve. Thanks. That's 2.30, please. You still doing food? Uh, Betty's gone, but I could do you a ploughman. Oh, that'd be nice. That was 5.80 altogether. I'll give that look. And uh, a large scotch for me. Hello, darling. Long time no see. So what, you swan off for half a day without telling anyone where you're going? You could have been busy. Well, it was a dumb thing to lay off one of our drivers then, wasn't it? She resigned. Yeah? Well, she's just unresigned for your information. What? Oh, great. I'm sick of you getting at Ronnie all the time. It's not just that I'm getting at, pal. You're just as much to blame. Well, I'm glad your new girlfriends bring you such joy into your life, Steve. I was going to ask you to look after Amy, but if it's a bad time... No, 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 I'll do it, that's great. Well, are you sure? Because if you're having problems with Ronnie... I said I'll do it. OK. Well, everything she needs is in the bag. I'll pick her up at half seven. Fine. Oh, and I mean what I say. I don't want your new girlfriend coming anywhere near her. Not if she can wind you up as much as this. What do you want, Jimmy? I want my prized possession back. That's all I am to you, isn't it? A possession. Well, I know things have been difficult between us, but I'm sure we could work it out. Oh, yeah? You're going to get a new brain fitted? I have mellowed. So that's why you're putting the frightness on streetcars. If you'd answered my phone calls, we could have sorted this out in a reasonable way. You don't know the meaning of the word. I miss you, babe. Do you not get lonely alone your own at night? I'm more than happy on my own, thanks. You think I was born yesterday? Who is he? What? That fancy boy who had his tongue halfway down your windpipe just now. One ploughman's. Thanks, Bev. I hope he knows a good plastic surgeon. And you wonder why I left. Who is he? I'll find out. Don't need me to tell you then, do you? I thought you were going to get violent for a minute. Do you think I should go and find Steve? Come back now and I swear I will never mention this ever again. <laughs> it's either that or things are going to get really nasty. You can make all the threats you like. You're not controlling me ever again. I've had enough. You are going nowhere. Thank God you're here. Why was happened? Ronnie's ex has turned up. At least I think it's him. What, hard-looking bloke losing it on top in more ways than one? Oh, yeah, that's him. They're in the Rovers now, and it's not looking very pretty. Now what are you going to do? Drag me out of here kicking and screaming? Lock me in a room for the rest of my life? Cos that's the only way you'll get me back. I am losing my patience. Watch my lips, Jimmy. We are finished. You are wasting your time. You've just made a very big mistake. Put another one in there, will you? You all right, love? Nothing I can't handle. I've sent Liz to get Steve. Was that your husband? Lovely man when you get to know him. You all right? I felt better. I call you. What did he say? What didn't he? Well, don't worry, I'm here now. We'll see this through together. You really don't have a clue, do you? So how much would it cost to hire your church? Mm, about £200. They'd have to book it six months in advance, of course. Six months? They'd have to go on the church roll and attend regularly. They don't exactly make it easy, do they? Well, as it says in the prayer book, marriage is not to be entertained unadvisedly, lightly or wantonly. You'd think church would want people to be married, so they're not living in sin. <laughs> well, we want the marriage to work as well, though, especially with all the divorce around these days. Ooh. That's another obstacle, by the way. What? 
you can't get married if you're divorced. It's at the discretion of the vicar. And where do you stand on that, Father? I'm a little old-fashioned, I'm afraid. I point someone like that quite firmly in the direction of the registry office. I shouldn't have left you on your own. What are you going to do? Follow me around all day? Are you sure he didn't hurt you? Well, he wouldn't in here, would he? So, he knows we're an item, then. <laughs> I wouldn't put anything past him. Well, he can't make you go back. He's got to realise that. Well, maybe, but how long that'll take and what he does in the meantime? Well, I'll have to go and talk to him. What? Well, I've got to do something. He'll take you apart. Well, he's going to find me and do that anyway, according to you. At least if I go and talk to him, it'll be on my terms. This will just make things worse. How could it get any worse? Well, if I could just talk some sense into him. Steve, you're out of your depth. You can't reason with a man like Jimmy Clayton. Well, it's either that or wait for him to make the next move. Well, at least I stand a fighting chance if I get there first. I'm going to go and see him. Tonight. Hang on while I pop into the vestry. Yeah, no problem. If you don't mind my asking, uh, are you all right? Yeah, why? It's just you've seemed a bit down in the last ten minutes or so. If you wanted to talk about it. It's all right, Father. That's what we're here for. It's nothing you could help me with anyway. Unfortunately. I'll go and get the money. Twenty for your papers, Deirdre, please. Thank you. And a packet of mints, oh, that's please. Seven fifty-five altogether. The uh, the chemist in Rosamond Street do nicotine patches, by the way. Is it that obvious? Well, you see, you don't normally buy mints, and you do normally buy cigarettes. Mm, you've got eyes like a hawk, Norris. And besides, Ken was in earlier, asking us not to supply you in future. What? Yes, I, I thought it was a bit paternalistic myself. A bit! But every marriage has its own dynamic, and I'm sure he's only got your best interests at heart. <sighs> Wait till I see him. I'll throttle him. Ah, murderous instincts, common symptom of nicotine withdrawal. Stick with it, Deirdre. It can only get better. I know I'm a sinner, Lord, and I never go to church, and I expect sillers the same. But all I want is to give her a dream day. If there's aught you can do for me, can you can, can you give me a sign? Oh well, worth a try. There you are. I, I just came in to have a look round. I hope you don't mind. No, not a bit. That's why we keep the church open all day. Oh, so there's your money. Keep the change. Y you keep the church open all day? Mm. Till it gets dark, anyway. It's no good to God or man locked up. But don't you have thieves in that? Mm, not in a country parish. <laughs> no need for CCTV out here. Not yet, anyway. Oh, uh, could I have a receipt for that? Certainly. You look a bit more cheerful. Do I? I had a word with his nibs while I was in the vestry. You are? about you seeming low. That's why it took so long. All oh, right. Well, I said a little prayer as well. It's amazing the results you can get, isn't it? Hallelujah, I say, Father. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Well, you didn't want to see me. Changing my mind. All oh, right. I see. 
Well, call one minute, hot the next. Bit of a pattern forming there, don't you think? Oh, come on. You have been a bit unpredictable. And one minute you're all over me, and then I don't hear from you for days on end, and then when I drive over to ask you what's wrong, you send me back in. My older brother's a policeman. Oh, really? Right. I think I've got a cousin somewhere who's a fireman. <laughs> Is that what you come to tell me? He's a bit protective of me. When I told him I was seeing you, he took it upon himself to run a check on the computer. I'd have gone mad if I'd known, but as it turns out, charged with assault last year, arrested on suspicion of murder this year. So, if I've seemed a bit distant just lately... Black, no sugar. And a chalky bicky. Milk or plain? Can I get back to you? I haven't got all day, you know. Baldwin wants me back behind that machine. If we don't finish that order by tonight, Bang goes his deposit for a divorce lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, what can I get you? I want nothing to do with your dispute with Mr. Baldwin, Thomas. <laughs> but I'm not free to wait on your hand and foot. I thought that's what you expected from white trash like me. Tea break was over an hour ago. Up yours, snooty cow. <laughs> I'm behind you, Jam. Yeah, me. Waste his money, I say. Hey, Joe. Absolutely what he did stinks. Yeah. How about you, Ailey? Well, I, I just don't really see what we can gain from him. But you've got to agree. I mean, he was out of order. Well, completely dead. In here. But I'm doing the coffee order. Now. Right, girls, if I'm not out in five minutes, form the rape squad. <laughs> Rest of you, shut up and get on with your work. Brought new ideas up, otherwise you're out. Ah, oh. is that a promise? Like the one you made to stop seeing Ali Am? I mean it. I kept my side of the bargain by keeping me gob shut, but you, oh no, you couldn't keep your greedy little hands off her, could you? Well, now look what's happened. I did not ask you to talk about her. You know she's left town because of this, don't you? Well, you'll be leaving with her if you carry on. And by the way, that's got nothing to do with his factory. The genie is out of the bottle, Danny boy. There's nothing you can do to control it. I control everything that goes on inside these four walls, Battersby. You want to keep your job, keep that tunnel of a gob shut and get back behind your machine. Now. Do you know, you've lost any authority you might have had, and not just over me. I was going to tell you. But you never quite got around to it. Well, it's a big thing. Yeah, all the more reason to come clean straight away. Well, I didn't know how you were going to react. And anyway, it's not as bad as it sounds. It was a big thing a minute ago. Look, the bloke I assaulted, OK? He had it coming. Oh, right, well, that's all right, then. Well, he'd messed up our Sarah's life. He was only being protective, like your brother. My last boyfriend used to say things like he had it coming to him. He even tried it on me a couple of times. That's another reason my brother ran a check. I'm starting to worry I attract that kind of man. I don't think so. No, if you were scared, you wouldn't come here on your own. You know I'm not that kind of man. Do I? Look, I had nothing to do with that murder. I can explain, OK? If you'll let me. Oh, sorry I'm late. I've been at the library doing some research for my next column. Oh, yeah? And what's that going to be about, then? Fascism in the free world? Sorry? Did you have to tell Norris not to sell me any more cigarettes? Oh, that. Oh, that! 
Felt about five years old when he told me. Well, I was only trying to help. <laughs> yeah, but treating me like a child isn't going to do that, is it? Will you two keep your voices down? I'm trying to watch me wildlife programme. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it to have that effect. How many others have you issued directives to? No one. 35 years I've had this addiction. Did you hear me? What else can I do? Well, you could try being a bit more supportive for a start. Tell you what he could do. Give up one of his vices. I mean, you could keep a check on each other that way. Nice thought, Blanche, but I don't really have any. I don't smoke, only have the odd drink. You suck 15 cups of coffee a day. Well, slight exaggeration. It's not far off. Well, it's hardly a vice. It is an addiction, though. Caffeine. Not addicted to it. Well, it shouldn't be hard to give up, then. Yeah, but it is one of my pleasures in life. Well, so is smoking yeah. for me. Coffee doesn't kill you, though. Only fair that you should give something up, Ken. I'm surprised you've not asked him before. His breath is rank with it sometimes. No husband of mine would get favours at bedtime in that condition. Perhaps I do OD occasionally. So how about it? OK, if it'll help. If you promise to give us cigarettes, I won't touch another cup. Deal. At last. Now, can I get back to me vultures, please? So, when he came to me for the 500th time, well, yeah, I lost me rag. I threatened to kill him. Out in the street, in front of everyone. But I didn't mean it. And I didn't kill him. But, of course, I had a motive. Which is why they arrested me. Now, do you still think I'm a violent man? It's a 16-year-old schoolgirl that's worrying me now. Yeah, well, that's another thing I don't exactly shout about. How many other things are there? None. I swear. Didn't realise you had a punch on for gym slip brides. Oh. Well, if that's what you think, you might as well leave now. Look, I pushed her away for months when I realised there was some spark between us, like any other sane man would. But in the end, when it wouldn't go away, we just thought we'd give it a try. I wish I'd never met her. But regrets aren't going to change that now, are they? It's a lot to take in, Martin. I know. I appreciate that. I know you don't tell people all your secrets in the first five minutes, but it's been nearly three weeks now. I know. I'm sorry. I just didn't want to blow it. But that's exactly what you have done. No. Please. Robin. Just... I need time to think mine. OK. All right. Sure. But promise you'll ring me tomorrow. At least we can talk about it. I can't promise anything. Jamini's organised a meeting with him alone. I told him. He's insane. So is it flowers you'll be wanting or just donations to charity? Very funny, Lloyd. I'm worried sick as it is. Where is he? He had to go out. Where? Urgent business. He's not with her, is he? Oh, uh, not exactly. I knew it. You know, it goes on about Amy being the most important thing in his life. Then some gangster's moll snaps her fingers, he just dumps her. It's a gangster who's gone to sea. Uh, Jimmy Clayton. Mr. McDonald, I presume. That's right. This is my son, Nick. All right, mate. It was you who wanted to talk. Uh, yeah, um... Well, I was hoping we could uh, sort our differences out amicably, rather than um, having to go at each other all the time. No one's been getting at me. No, but... I've heard you've had a spot of bother. You're not suggesting I had anything to do with it, are you? OK, look, I'll, um, I'll cut to the chase. I know you saw me with Ronnie this afternoon. I haven't set out to upset you. It's just that 
Well, emotions don't work that way, do they? Look, the thing is, you can do what you like to me. And streetcars. You can put me in hospital. You can put me out of business. You can make it so I never see Ronnie again. But after what she said to me, that's not going to bring her back. I know that's not what you want to hear right now, and, well, I'd be the same if I was in your shoes. But as it is that way, I was wondering whether we could, um, well, call it a truce. You've got a bottle, I'll give you that. Streetcars can help, we can stay off your patch. There's not many people would have the guts to come and say all that to me face. So what do you think? I think you might have a point. So, uh, can we have a drink to that? Are you going soft in your old age? Oh, I have a heart, Nick. You can't whack someone who says things like, emotions don't always work like that. It's not often I have an intellectual conversation. I like to make the most of it. Can we call a truce? You're knocking my missus off. Is he straight out of the nut house or what? So what are you thinking? You can't just whack someone like that. That'd be a waste of a go. You've got to take your time and think of something special. When I've finished with Stephen McDonald, I wish he'd never been born. <laughs> <laughs>